Well, back in the shop again. Uh, on the 65 hard top, uh, I got a set of shocks to put on and stabilizer link set to put on it. Also, I want to uh, probably change out the driver's side upper ball joint. I have a used one I'm going to put in that's in really good shape. Um, the, and then I'll check out the lower one. There's a squeak over there, it may be the lower bushing, but I wanted to make sure I did, you know, tear it apart first. I ordered these parts kind of along with some of the parts for the Dodge Journey. So not everything's there that should be replaced. And if I find stuff like the upper rubbers for the shocks are, are in bad shape, I'll order them and I'll replace them when the time comes. For now, I'm gonna reuse whatever I can. I know it's not the best way to go about it, but uh, that's it. I also wanted to congratulate Nick, uh, Vintage Thunderbird Repair. He got himself, he's gotten himself a pretty sweet ride there now, a 64 and a half convertible uh, Mustang, white on white. Beautiful little car. Nick, I'm pretty jealous of you there. It's a nice looking rig. Enjoy it. I know there's work to be done, but uh, hey, even the cars that are in the best of shape still need work, these old, these old jalopies. Also, uh, my wife made me up a little, uh, a little uh, picture, and I think I, I posted it on the community group, but uh, she had it, she framed it, and uh, it's pretty sweet. It's a picture she took of us out cruising around there one night, and I'll turn you around and we'll have a look at it. All right, I hope you can see that. The light's kind of shading in here. This is my uh, picture wall. Uh, these old ads were done up by my brother-in-law, and he gave them to me for Christmas. Hey, with the exception of this one, this one Beverly did, and that's the hardtop. Oh, there's so much glare. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that or not. But that's the one she made uh, from an old vintage ad and put, substitute the picture we had. Let me see if I turn the lights on if it's any better. Nope, made it worse. Anyway, oh, there it is. That's a little better. Anyway, there it is. It's a nice picture, nice addition to my picture wall. Great, thank you Beverly, thank you Dan for all the other ones. A couple of Rancheros up there, because you know, I have a Ranchero too. Anybody doesn't know that, GT 73 GT Ranchero, rough shape, but we'll get back to that. But that's it, so let's get on this uh, shock job over here. These aren't high-end shocks by any stretch of the imagination. They're just a Monroe gas shock. I guess you can see it there. An aromatic plus. Pretty pretty basic shock, nothing special. These are Delphi uh, stabilizers. I think they were nine bucks a piece. I got them from uh, Parts Avatar here in Canada. It's similar to uh, Rock Auto, what you have in the US. But I get free shipping on stuff if it's over $99. So I usually use the uh, Parts Avatar. All right, let's get at her. First thing, we gotta get rid of the wheel, take the wheel off, and there's a mounting for the lower part of the shock inside the spring at the bottom on the upper control arm. And there's also this, uh, up in the shock tower, this cap has to come off. And then I can get at the, the this top nut for the shock, the old shock. And uh, this car on this side has a squeak in it. Like it's not a squeak, it's like a, like a, something's dried right out, and I think it is the shock. I mean, you gotta remember, this car was parked 40 years ago, and who knows how long the shocks were put on before that. Everything gets a little dried out in that much time. Anyway, I'm gonna get the wheel off, and I'll start working on the cap. It's pretty straightforward, three bolts. And then there's this uh, thread nut here too, thread cutting nut. Got the car jacked up, got the wheel off, and then there's these three nuts right here that hold that lower uh, shock support on. So a lot of times these are really rusty to get off. These don't look too bad. I'm gonna spray a little bit of my uh, deep creep on them and see if they'll come off easily. Uh, if they don't, I have another weapon that I haven't revealed yet that's been working really well for me and I've been meaning to do a video on it but I haven't got around to it. So maybe you'll get a good look at it this time if these don't come off easily. So let's get them off and uh, 
get this job going. All right, I put a little uh, Lekomatazzi on them, on the bolts, on the nuts rather, the uh, little bit of deep creep. And uh, they're still not coming easily and I don't want to break them off. So I have, this is the tool I was telling you about. So it's called the Hot Rod, uh, flameless heat system, and it's by this company here. This was not sent to me or anything. I bought this myself, Amazon. I think it was $219 at the time, which is not a bad deal. I got the basic kit, only three, three coils, but uh, it's 2.5 millimeter wire, copper wire. And I, I have some of the coating already. So I'll probably make more coils. I'm not sure what uh, gauge of wire 2.5 is. I'll look it up. So, I've tested this quite a few times already. I've actually gotten out of a pinch with this, but I haven't ever done a I haven't done a video on it. So let's get it wound up. The fan runs all the time on it. it makes me it, I, it's annoying, but hey, who cares if you can get the nut off without breaking everything? So let me get it hooked up. I've got it bent to where it needs to be. That's a great thing too. You can bend these around as long as you don't uh, interrupt the coil much. Uh, my understanding, you need three wraps minimum around what you're doing to cause the magnetic field so what these are is a magnetic induction heater so let's get it hooked up and i'll see the tripod on so you can see what's going on there uh it's a pretty cool tool for that little bit of money it works really well all right there's a little helpful hint anybody doing this um you can get a socket short socket and a 9 16 916 short socket and a ratchet up in there for the lower shock uh, bracket that goes under the upper control arm. Uh, you won't do it if you're just letting it hang uh, down completely. But if you put your cars all supported like mine all the way around, you got good support, put the jack back under and raise that control arm a little bit. Just remember you've got a you've got a jack holding a piece so keep your hands away from that, that pinch point up in there just don't get your hands up in there because if it does come down that's the only place really you're going to pinch yourself and don't get under don't get underneath the rotor of course the rotor but uh, you can move it up you give yourself about that much more room to work it makes it much simpler All right, I got it on the bolt, or the nut. Let's see what happens. It's not the perfect angle. I'm gonna bend it a little more. Maybe I can get up under here better. Nope. Brake line's right in the way. Should've taken it off. All right, I'm on there now. Hopefully you guys can see this. It takes a minute or so for it to work there. It's smoking already. I can't really see what's going on there. You guys should probably see better than me. The fan's loud, but hey, it's cooling something, I guess. Not red hot yet. It'll bring it right up red hot. There, I got them all. Got them all. That sure helped. But it's slower than it normally takes. I don't know what's going on, whether I'm doing it wrong. It seems like it. You can't have it touching the metal, it has to be off on. It's a really tight spot to work. But anyway, let's get these out. And I'll show you on this when the time comes, on the stabilizer link. Because it'll need to be heated too. Maybe we'll get better results, a better video of that. Over to another one when I can see to get it on. 
Now these have already done. They say it's a lifesaver, I have to say. Here's the button. Very awkward with one hand. There it goes. Let's go. she comes there all right got the bottom off let's get this cap off now another 9 16 so zip them off all right just as simple as that there's the cap pull him up over there set him aside now I gotta get this uh, threaded this locking nut this little uh, press nut here. I think they're a uh, thread cutting nut. That's what they're called. I wonder if it's a 916. Looks like it. <coughs> yep, that's off. Good. I doubt if these are going to come off. Let's have a quick snap at them. <coughs> there it is, just like that. All right. That was pretty simple. Now I gotta pick that washer out. There she goes, coming up over it. So that rubber's off. And I'm looking through the camera. The rubber's not perfect. It's not terrible, but it's not perfect. It's still soft as all get out, so it's nice and supple. So now I'm gonna have to take this plate off. So that means I have to take these two bolts off too. So I'll get those off. And then I should, we'll be able to pull the shock right up through here. And then we'll change the mount, put new shock on, and away we go. All right, got it ready to come out. That rubber is not great, so I'm gonna order new ones of those. But I'm gonna go check the parts from my part supply. I think I have one of these that are in better shape than that. Uh, so I'll go look before I put it back together, get a new top plate for that. It looks good on the top but it's definitely not, it's really not worth putting back on. So I'm pretty sure I have a better one than that. Anyway, here we are, I'll pull this out. This shock is shot, <laughs> but this shock is beat. Look at it. Oh yeah. <laughs> not much left of that shot. Yeah, that's what's making the noise, she's crunchy. All right, let me get rid of that, get that out of there and we'll be all set. Ran into a bit of a shag up with the shocks. The new shocks are different. They're quite a lot smaller in diameter. They're like they're for a, a back of a Mustang or something like that. I don't know what they're for, but they aren't gonna work on here. So I went and got the shocks off of the uh, parts car and they're uh, actually a Motorcraft shock. They're a little scruffy looking, so I'll give them a wire down and I'll spray paint them and put them on and uh, they seem to be working good. I know I kept them for a reason. And I also found the uh, plate with the rubber, so that's good, it's a nice shape. Both of them are in good shape. So I'm gonna use those, one of those. I think it's the oil from the shock that got on this one and destroyed it. But I'll get new rubbers and everything eventually. I mean, uh, I'm trying to save as much resources for the convertible but I don't want to put this together haphazardly either. So I'm going to do a little more investigating on the shocks, but for now, I'll put the shore trackers in. There's a pair of them, they work about the same, and I'll, I'll paint them up and they'll look pretty good. All right, there we are. We got one of those old shocks painted up. She's not perfect, but uh, it's a heck of a lot better than it was. So I'm going to get ready to put her back in. And I got the, uh, Oh, she's weight on that cable there. I got that uh, stabilizer link in. It's looking pretty good. The ball joint is actually quite stiff, so I'm not going to change it. I greased it up good. It's been greased all along, so add it again. So I'm going to put her back together then. Uh, I've got the one side finished. Time to move the other side. Uh, I decided to give the old caliper a bit of a cleaning and a paint job while I had it out. 
did the uh, cover, the anti-rattle cover, silver, and then I did the caliper red. I think it'll look all right with those rims. I think Nick mentioned that at one point when I first got this car, they would, or when I first put the rims on, that they would look good painted red. So here they are. I think they look pretty good. Well, there she is. She's back down on all fours again. Torque the wheels up. Guys, if you don't have a torque wrench, go get one. Torque the wheels. Torque wrench isn't expensive, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than losing a wheel on the highway. Got the calipers painted red. I got the shocks changed out. Mind you, they aren't what I wanted because they're used shocks, but I'll order the right ones and we'll do it again. I won't bore you guys with it, but we'll do it again. But I think that looks pretty smart. Yeah, I like that. That red uh, caliper in there. Well, that's her, and I'm gonna do a little video on this. I mentioned it a couple times, I think, here already. We'll do a little video on it. I really like that product. Anyway, uh, that's it. I hope everyone has a good week. Um, got more to do in here. Oh yeah, I should mention a little bit what's going on in here. I still have, ooh, finger fade. I still have these side panel, like uh, wing panel windows to do. I want to take them apart, clean them. I still have the trim to put on over there. I still have the armrest to put in the back and put the seat all bolt back in and the package tray needs to be screwed back in. And sound dead and underneath all of it before I do it. But I think that old uh, roof or headliner come out pretty good. Looking good in there. A little more work to do on the interior, but she's coming. Uh, the wheel bearings made a significant difference in the noise on the highway. And hopefully the shocks now we'll have too because we had an awful bit of crunching going on that side and no much wonder that shock was pretty much kaput there she is down there yeah she was done she won't even hardly go down well, it goes down but there it goes anyway she was kaput she's grindy going back up worn right out oil all over it done yeah pretty happy with that all right that's her for this uh, video. Thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.